Normal. Constituting, conforming to, not deviating or different from, the common type or standard, regular, usual. This is the definition of normal that is spelled out in Leonard Davis's Constructing Normalcy. Davis describes how this term is problematic and how it creates the line between ability and disability. Down syndrome does not slow me down. It's just what I have in me. Recently, more and more schools have been moving to a system of either full or partial inclusion, meaning that they are bringing students with different learning disabilities, such as cognitive or emotional disabilities, deafness, blindness, or speech impediment, into what society views as a normal classroom. Inclusive education means schooling for everyone, everywhere, at any time, and, and not segregating individuals based on their needs. This act of mixing students whom society and the school system have deemed disabled with those who are seen as normal shows that these students are really no different from each other. She's not like everybody else. I want you to listen to what you just said, William. You're asking me to treat this girl differently because she has a disability, when actually it seems to me she just wants to be treated like everybody else. Keeping students segregated from one another sends the message that they are different from each other. The response I see from our kids is, okay, yeah, these are kids in our school. Yeah, they may be a little different, they may have some different needs, but, you know, so what? That's cool. Partial inclusion is a program in which special needs students switch between a normal classroom and a special education classroom throughout the day or week. This allows students to spend some time in both types of classrooms and gives them the access to interact with other students as well as still receive the extra help they may need in particular subjects. My goal is that they learn how to be comfortable talking to someone who's not exactly like they are. I think it's really important to learn that when you're young, that people who have disabilities are just like everybody else. While some may believe that special needs programs are the best option because it allows students to build culture within the special needs community and stay away from any potential prejudice, partial inclusion has proven to be more effective in letting the students grow to become part of society. As of 2011, the introduction of partial inclusion has proven successful through the rising graduation percentages of students with special needs. Before inclusion, only a small 44.5% of 12th graders with a learning disability graduated. After inclusion, that number rose to 62.1%. This evidence shows that by partially including a child but not fully taking them out of special education, their morale is boosted and the want to graduate with their peers is heightened. We all know someone with a disability. We also know that the attention and the care that they need has to do with a lot what happens in this state house. With the small revision to the recently changed IDEA law, Inclusion can become an option that schools are required to offer, giving more freedom to special needs students to reach their full potential.